since you were last here, Dave, I've um, put an extra set of grow beds in. Uh, you can see the growth we've had since then. I've also put um, 200 silver perch in and the original 12 yabbies that we had when you were first here uh, have now increased to about 300. Wow. So, so a lot more nutrient in the water now which uh, means that, that, you know, that virtually responds to the uh, plant growth as well. Now, are you still patiently awaiting the fruits of your labour or the, uh, <laughs> the meats of your labour? <laughs> With the vegetables, we're um, pretty much, well, every night we do have something out of the garden. Uh, we've had our first feed of yabbies uh, about two weeks ago, but uh, really looking forward to having some silver perch when they grow up. What's the story with silver perch? How long will they take? All right, so far, I mean, obviously I haven't had any experience here in the centre, but uh, from other uh, forum members that I know, usually it takes a, a summer, winter and a summer, usually around 18 months. But I suspect with our warmer wet weather here, we'll actually probably be able to do it in about 14 months. So it's, it's quite widespread, the cultivation of silver perch now? They're probably one of the most widely used fish. Um, probably close second would be trout. Uh, trout are excellent for uh, systems because of their um, quick growth, usually around about six months. The only limiting factor with trout is the fact that uh, you need a lot cooler wa water, so we could only really grow them over winter. There's been a, a lot of discussion like, in the media recently about fish, both from the point of view of wild stocks being depleted but also the point of view, I guess, of, of the kind of, of fish farming and, and, and the consequences of that with, you know, virtually battery fish. How, how can you, how do you look after the health of your fish and, and, and make sure you've got a, you know, a fish that's worth eating and, and happy, I guess, while it's swimming yeah. away? Yeah, I, I think there's two things uh, with that. One is uh, the quality of the food that you actually feed the fish and uh, one of my aims is to minimise the inputs from uh, externally. Uh, I do use a commercial barra pallet that I feed the silver perch but I minimise that and I'm using uh, worms that I grow myself, uh, duckweed that I grow myself and also a plant called moringa. Um, also, I'll look into um, some other sort of source, protein source, maybe uh, black soldier flies is another one they, they often uh, tout as a good one. Um, the other thing in relation to uh, quality of your fish is that the, um, usually those sorts of fish that are farmed in uh, you know, fairly large commercial systems, uh, it's known as aquaculture and there isn't a real filtration system where um, the nutrients are used up like in this system where they're used up by the plants. What happens is that water is replaced regularly and obviously that water goes somewhere and off, often that somewhere is in rivers and lakes and so on which causes uh, you know all sorts of problems. But this is a contained system that's it yeah. really just keeps going round and round. Yeah, so the quality is, um, you know, obviously governed by the filtration system. Uh, on this, it's you can see how clear the water is.